In this video, everything you wanted to know about Pinji CP100 FX. Where can you buy it and what's the price? What's inside of the box? What are the specs? We'll take it apart and check what's inside. We'll measure the latency and science all the shit out of it. I'll show you how to update the firmware and back up your presets. We'll go through all menus and effect blocks. And learn how to use your feet effectively. While checking all factory presets and connection options. And of course, we'll compare the simulation to a real cabinet. And this journey begins right now. Hello everyone, this is gonna be a very long video. So if you just want to listen to what it sounds like or check the shootout, just scroll to the corresponding section. This hilarious device was first introduced a year ago, in 2016, at the Music Messe in Frankfurt, Germany. And as many other people, I was really looking forward to try it. Well, so far, I can tell it exceeded my expectations. The official website says the efficient impulse response length is 85 milliseconds, which is four times of the old Pangea, which I reviewed some time ago. The latency is very low too, we'll check all these numbers. At the moment, the new Pangea is available almost exclusively through AMT online stores, with Tomon being the only alternative source outside of Russia. The price is about 450 euros for European market and 495 dollars for the rest of the world. If you're in the States, contact amtelectronicsusa.com. Российская цена, похоже, просто непобедима для конкурентов. Surprise, surprise, this AMT device comes in a white box, not in a black box, as they always do. It's pretty big, actually. The first thing that comes out of it is this big sticker with AMT logo, and no, it's not the one I've got on my guitar. 2016 product catalog, that's because I've got mine last year. Nothing new since then, actually, except of true cab library. Just like with the old Pungi, we have an incredibly long USB lead. And this is new, this is a micro SD card reader. The one you're getting may actually look different. I've seen at least two different models coming with Pangeas. Okay, warranty card as always. Just don't break your device and you're never gonna need it. The power supply is the same as the one coming with LA1 series or with the old Pangea, or with many other pedals from different manufacturers. I think I already have five or six of them. This week one of them eventually died, very sad. What I'm missing here is the UK plug. I extra asked for it, and AMT guys said they don't have any of those. They don't order them from China because of low sales of AMT products in the UK. I really want a UK plug for this one. My British friends, this is your fault. You're just not buying enough stuff from AMT. Please, do that. I need a UK plug ASAP. So, one more thing here, a microSD card. This one is 128 megabytes. Not much, but as we know, it's enough for plenty of impulses. And cards up to 32 gigs are supported. Talking about device, on the front panel we have phone's output, auxiliary input, USB, microSD card slot and digital output. There are so many things on the back you can literally connect to anything. Expression pedal, MIDI, power supply input, TRS and XLR outputs, notice that ground lift switch to avoid ground loops, through output and finally the input. By the way, there is no manual in the box, but you will find it online and it is very detailed, every single thing is explained there. Talking about weight and size, the new Pangea is approximately as heavy as two regular paddles. And the funny thing is, it is exactly twice as big as any of the Legend Amp series preamps. You know what, guys, you have to give me some feedback about this disassembly section, because I'm doing this all the time, but I have no idea whether anyone is actually watching it, or just, you know, skipping. At the same time, I found out there are some manufacturers who don't want their pedals to be shown this way. For some mysterious reasons, like there is a rocket science or something. Does this mean that we will definitely do this anyway? Maybe. Maybe not. In any case, AMT guys have nothing to hide. So let's take a look inside. Obviously no place for battery, but we didn't expect any, right? There's a huge DSP and a lot of tiny SMD elements. 99.9% .9 of you don't care, but I know there will be one guy who will ask what kind of DSP it is. So, just for you, here it is. Nice and big. Other than that, there are two boards, no moving parts inside, no cables, nothing. Built like a tank. A very clean assembly. I'm pretty sure you don't want to modify this one. Now you have seen everything, don't try this at home. And this is one of my favorite parts where we science the shit out of something. First, I want to measure the resistance between the input and through output. The thing is, they are actually connected inside, directly. Therefore, no resistance. Through output is supposed to be used for a cabinet, but you can actually use it as a bypass for anything else. Let's measure the latency. I've done this before, so I'm not gonna describe the whole procedure again and again. You can watch my video on, for example, the old Pangea to find out how it's done. 
the first measurement is in the single cabinet mode with cabinet simulation turned off. This time for higher precision I've decided to measure in samples and then convert them into milliseconds. I'm recording at 96 kHz. Some basic math operations and 144 samples turn into 1.5 milliseconds. Let's turn on the cabinet simulation and see what happens. And with one cabinet and simulation activated, the latency is 1.77 milliseconds. I switch the PNG into the dual cabinet mode, it reboots, it always does this when you change the mode, turn off the cabinet simulation and take a measurement. As you can see, no matter how many cabinets there are, if the simulation is turned off, the latency is the same. Now let's turn it back on. And with two active cabinets, the latency is 2.27 milliseconds. Not as described at the website, but still very good. You might have noticed that I have a firmware version 161. The latest version for today is 163, which you can find in the media center at the official website, together with update instructions. I will also download factory presets and settings and show you how to make an update and upload or backup your presets. After I connect the Pangea to my computer via USB cable, I can access its internal storage. Now I want to create a folder on the desktop where I will back up all the presets and settings from the Pangea. Just copy all the files. Now I replace files in the internal storage with presets and settings downloaded from the website. Updating the firmware is actually very easy. All you need to do is copy the firmware file to the root directory of Pangea. OK, done, copied. Don't forget to remove the device safely before unplugging it. Next time I power up the Pangea, the update process will begin. It takes less than a minute and now I have the latest firmware. I want to do one more thing here. I want to plug the microSD card into my laptop and copy some cabinet profiles on it. I actually have MT TrueCap Impulse Response library to demonstrate this. The only condition here is whatever you're copying on the SD card must be inside of the Impulse folder. If I now disconnect the microSD card and plug it into the Pangea, I can use the browser inside of the IR effect block to access the SD card, find the impulse I want to use and load it. Don't forget to save the preset. Well, now that we have latest firmware, let's check what all these magic buttons do. First of all, the confirm knob lets me select presets by turning it left and right, and I actually have to press it in order to recall the preset. Escape button. If I press this one, I will see the currently loaded impulse, which is Marshall, I believe. I press it once again to go back. Edit button. I press this one to get to the preset screen where I can see all the effect blocks. I can enable them and disable by pressing confirm button. I don't want to save just yet. And then we have these multifunctional buttons. I call them multifunctional because they do different things depending on where you are. For example, here, if I press 1, I'll go to attenuator settings, which are good to have if I'm connected to, let's say, a power amplifier, two power amplifier, head amp, whatever. I'll set it to 0, go back. Uh, 2 brings me to the volume settings, where I can set master volume and headphones volume separately. 3. This is the master EQ. I can turn it on and off by pressing edit. Um, this is a 3-band EQ and I can control the frequency for the middle band. 4. Brings me to the system menu. Here I can turn on and off the cabinet simulation globally for all presets. For example, if I'm connected just to an amp, a real amp with a real cabinet, I don't need cabinet simulation, right? So I can turn it off here. Uh, MIDI channel. I can choose one of 16 MIDI channels to communicate with other MIDI devices. Cabinet number. This is to choose between single and double cabinet mode. Expression pedal settings. Foot switch settings for this foot switch is here. Digital output. MIDI PC map. Tempo can be set to preset or to global. This is for tapping the tempo. Tuner controller lets me select the MIDI controller to enable or disable the tuner, and time can be set to seconds or BPM, whatever you like. Let's go back. 5. Tuner. Actually, it turns on the tuner. What else? 
edit. Let's go to the preset screen. Uh, so here we have resonance filter, noise gate, compressor, preamp simulation, power amp simulation, input response, which is a cabinet simulation, EQ, delay, phaser, flanger, chorus, ER, uh, <laughs> emergency, early reflections, which is some sort of an echo, reverb, and tremolo. Each effect block has its own list of parameters that you can tweak, and some of them have mix to control the balance between dry and wet signal, and low pass filter and high pass filter. EQ is a little bit different because there are actually five bands, so this is a five band parametric EQ. Parametric means you can control each band's frequency and width. There's also presence, which is shared between the EQ and the power amp. So if I go to power amp now, I will see presence set to the same value. If I change it here, let's say 74, and go back to the EQ, yeah, you see? Now, going back to these buttons here, if I press 1 at the preset screen, I can clear the preset to default settings. I don't want to do this. 2. I can adjust the volume for every preset separately. 3. Controllers menu. You can set up to 16 controllers to each preset. Uh, let's say expression pedal or one of these foot switches here. And they can control different things, let's say tremolo rate or volume or compressor, all the effects. You can calibrate it and set the MIDI event. Mm, 4. This is to rename a preset. And 5. Let's me copy the currently selected effect block to another preset. Let's say I found really cool delay settings, mm, which I like. And I want to copy them to another preset. I just press 5, select the preset and press confirm probably. So now I don't want to do this. If I want to go back to the home screen, I press escape and uh, I don't want to save it just yet. So I press it once again. Here we are. Before we actually listen to what it sounds like, let me show you how you can control the Pangea. There are basically three ways to do that. First of all, by means of built-in foot switches and then you can connect an external expression pedal or a MIDI controller or any other MIDI device. Talking about foot switches, each of them can do four different things which you can assign in the foot switch menu. Default type stands for the action written right here, which is scrolling up and down through presets and recalling them by pressing confirm. Controller is used to access effects parameters. To know all that's obvious. And finally, preset map allows you to scroll through predefined list of presets by pressing the foot switch repeatedly. I'll go back to the default. More than that, there are two modes, single mode and double mode. In the double mode, you can assign two different effects on the same foot switch. Go back to single and let's check how it works. I have a preset with tremolo, delay and phaser effects, so I'll just go to the preset screen and try to press a couple of buttons and see what happens. <laughs> Tremolo off, delay, and phaser. All the assignments are made in the controllers menu. Expression pedal, one controller, another controller, and foot switch confirm. Instead of showing you effect blocks one by one, I will shut up for a few minutes and go through all factory presets. First 10 presets are for the case when the guitar is connected directly to the Pangea. I'm using an extra overdrive pedal. After that, I'll change it to a preamp. Check it out. Thank you. 
As I mentioned before, the following presets are supposed to be used with a preamp rather than with a guitar connected directly to Pangea.
I was just using neck pickup for that. All these acoustic presets sound more or less the same. They are meant for different setups. There are two presets for magnetic pickups and two for piezo, for using it with LA2 preamp or going directly into Pangea. This guitar also has piezo pickups. And now I'm plugging it directly into CP100. It's unbelievable how many different sounds you can get just by swapping cabinets. I'm gonna use AMT R2 preamp and here is its dry sound without a cabinet. Now let's listen to different cabinets from AMT True Cap library I've mentioned before. one preamp and so many different sounds. Let me put them into the right context for you. CP100 FX allows using two different cabinets at the same time. To enable the dual cabinet mode, I go to System menu and adjust cab num parameter. I need the 2L plus R mode. The device will reboot, it always does when you change the mode. And let's create a preset. Let's say I want the F brand cabinet on the left. something completely different on the right. Yeah, maybe that one will do. Once again, the O cap alone. And now the F cap alone. CP100 FX doesn't have a USB audio interface, but it does have a digital output. And you can choose what you want to send into it. Fully processed sound or dry input. At the same time, we will check the auxiliary input. And another, I would say, feature is that whatever comes to auxiliary input goes to the main and balanced outputs only. It is not routed to the digital output. Which means, in theory, you can fit a backing track into Pangea and play together with it while recording your guitar alone through the digital output. Let's try this. I will also use headphones to listen to the playback and my guitar.
This is what I hear. This is from the digital output. There is one problem with the headphones output though. Take a look at this clip LED. When connected to the main output, the clipping occurs when the LED turns red. But when it's orange, just as it was right now, there is no clipping and the sound is clean. If I use the headphones output, the clipping starts earlier. Exactly when the LED turns orange. Check this out. So, if you're using the headphones output, keep the level low. Yeah, time for the shootout. There were so many talks about using the capsim before or after the power amp that I decided to use two Pangeas to show you both options. The one on the right is connected to the effects loop of AMT Stonehead. The one on the left is connected to its power output. Pangea is not a load box. And you do need a cabinet or some sort of dummy load if you connect it to a power amp. I will now profile my cabinet, which is connected to the left Pangea. I'm using two mics, a condenser mic and the SM57. The first strip is recorded through the stone hat's power amp section. This is gonna be our tube impulse to use with the Pangea on the right. I also have a solid state amp with a flat frequency response. I use it to record the solid state impulse for the Pangea on the left. Conversions, conversions, conversions. Let's load corresponding impulses to both Pangeas. On the right one, I'm gonna activate the power amp simulation. There is a special mode called default with a flat response, which is supposed to be used for impulses recorded with a tube power amp. This is our case. Okay, let's listen to the Pangea versus condenser mic. <laughs> I just turned off the power amp simulation on the right Pangea. Can you hear the difference? Now let's listen to the dynamic microphone. The power amp simulation for the right Pangea is active again. <laughs> And finally, the same thing without the power amp simulation. Thank you. 
Okay, we're almost through, here's a recap. We have a cabinet simulator with a pretty tasty effective impulse length, low latency, not as low as written on the website, but still very low, tremendous amount of impulses through 32 gigs micro SD card, nice size and weight, I would say, no load box, by the way, very important. I have a long list of pros and cons this time. We already talked about weight in size and low latency, price is unbeatable. Flexible connection options definitely a plus, many ways to control it, Pangea can also control other devices over MIDI. And probably one of the best thing is regular firmware updates. There are so many new effects and features compared to early firmware versions. Probably one of the biggest cons is that in some countries this device is really hard to find, at least as of today. We've talked about USB audio, about headphones, I found out some MIDI connectors will not fit, I hope the company will fix it. Another problem is that a lot of information, specifically updates history for example, is only available in Russian. But the manual is very detailed and you can always contact the support, they do speak English. Altogether, this is a fantastic device. It does the job and definitely gives a lot of freedom to create. And this is the end of this long, long, long video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, this is how I know that you want more. I'll try to answer all your comments. That's it for the moment, thanks for watching.